All right, so let's take a look at uh, how we, we would work with uh, XLT, XML, and do some transformations from within uh, Java. Right. Uh, so the, um, uh, so the, the, uh, the, basically, uh, what we need to be able to do is read an input XML, right? read an input XLT, compile the XLT, because that's, it needs to be executed, right? it needs to be interpreted and then executed, and then apply that 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 uh, that com compiling of the XSLT, apply it to the input XML, and then just generate the output uh, X XML, right? Or X uh, or HTML or whatever it is that we're we're, we're we are generating. Okay. Uh, the um, the once we have the transformer, right? Once we have that those pieces uh, of the code that do the, do the transformation, the only thing that ever changes is just the input XML. The input XSLT and what it what it is that we want to generate, right? But the transformer itself needs to be written just once, all right? So let's write a transformer. Uh, so first we'll need a um, a source file uh, that uh, that um, or, or two source files, one for the uh, XSLT, uh, one for the uh, XML. Uh, we need to uh, generate a resulting XML or HTML or whatever it is, and then we'll need a transformer that compiles and applies the uh, the XSLT and transforms it uh, into the uh, sort into the results right so let's uh, let's take a look so the general steps are uh, to create two uh, 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 I'm sorry a, a source um, uh, for uh, uh, that will read the uh, the input XML and the XSLT I uh, will need to generate a result that will write the result out and then we have a transformer that does a transformation so let's uh, let's uh, do that. Let's um, write here a uh, a document. Uh, let's create here a file that we can use as an example. So this will be um, inside the package CS5200 uh, XML XSLT, uh, and then this the um, the transformer. We call it XSLT transformer. What? Why'd you put it there? <laughs> close others. There we go. And let's close this. All right. So in there, we're going to uh, load the uh, the the import statements that we need. All right, so all the transformation libraries are under the javax.xml.transform, okay? Uh, and the streams are so you can read and write uh, to the um, um, from the file system or also from a connection, uh, an HTTP connection or network connection. You can read and write uh, to there as well. Uh, let's um, uh, let's uh, uh, oh, uh, let's define what those files are. Uh, let's see, the XSL file, maybe we'll convert, um, let's see, what, what conversion do we have here, example? Um, okay, courses. Okay, so the first example we'll look at is courses.xml. So, okay, so this is uh, courses to what? To students. Okay, so courses to students, students.xml. Uh, so this is this is the XSL file. This is the transform the transformation file. So this is XSL, which will convert presumably a courses.xml into a students.xml. Okay, uh, the input file presumably will be courses.xml, some list of courses, uh, and the output is that we're going to extract presumably students right, from that course. All right. So once we have the files that we want to uh, read or generate or whatnot, uh, let's uh, let's create the transformer. Uh, we'll need to create uh, streams that um, that read and also be able to write. Uh, so we need two source streams that can uh, read the uh, the input XML, XSL code, that can read the input XML code, and then can generate the output XML code. All right, and then finally, we'll just need the transformer. Let's copy that, and there it is. Okay, 
So we're going to create a, a, a factory that can instantiate uh, these trans transfer transformers. Right, and then it will uh, transport input and output. Uh, let's see, this, um, uh, okay, I need to put this in a try catch block. We'll do that. Uh, and this needs to be also in a try catch. Yes, it does. So let, let's put this also here. There we go. Um, let's see, uh, needs, it throws transformer exception. So let's add, add catch clock. There we go. Okay, so the transformation actually happens in these two lines, right? Uh, so first it compiles the XSL code, right? So that, that once you have the, uh, the compiled XSL, you can actually apply it to any number of XML documents that follow the same schema, right? So, so this, this can be compiled just once and then applied to any number of input fields, in, input of XML documents. So you can read one, transform it, then read another one, and then transform it, and it just applied to a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, so, but it needs to be compiled just once, okay? All right, so, so we don't have a courses file. Let's, add, let's use it from the next uh, example. Let's grab courses XML. Let's generate a brand new courses XML uh, document here. New uh, other XML XML file, and we'll call it courses.xml, and we'll just copy and paste this in here. There we go. So we got courses. And what is it? Oh, I think I have an error here. So this is first name and first name. There we go. Oh, last name too. It's confused. I don't blame you. And do we have some extra code in there? Let's see. Are we done? Uh, courses, course. Oh, I don't have a closing courses. Okay, I think, anything else? So I better fix this. Did I not, did I not have that? Oh, I see, I see what I did. Yeah, okay, I see. And first is here. It didn't fit, so I just wanted to, okay, there we go. All right, all right, so we have the courses and I think I need a closing courses here, right? Courses. Oh, I guess I had more stuff here. <laughs> I have more students. All right, so let's uh, let's do let's do that. First name, last name. And this is last. Last. All right. And so there's another course here. That's why I didn't close the courses. Uh, students, and let's add another course right here. Okay, that looks right. Is that right? That looks right, correct? Okay, so it's a it's a um, a list of courses that contains uh, two courses, and each course has two students. Right, so what we'd like to be able to do is just extract the list of students, regardless of which course they're in. Right? So we want to un uh, want to flatten perhaps uh, this uh, this uh, this data model over here. Yes. Where where? In the next course, you have a first and last, but in the first course, you have a first and last. Uh. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to go with the original one then. First here and first here. And I'll go with last here. Last and last. Thank you. All right, so we have the XML. Uh, let's take a look at the XSLT. The XSLT, here's a transformation, right? It's just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna generate XML, I want indentation, and I'm gonna pattern match the root, right? So once, once you find the root, um, I want to generate students, right? And then I wanna trigger any templates that match, right, from here on, 
right? Just any, any other templates. And in this case, it will be another template that's going to say iterate over all the students, right? Under students, under course, under courses, right? And as you uh, uh, once you find that for each for each one that matches, uh, run this 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 uh, generate a student entry with a, generating an attribute ID whose value is the ID attribute uh, um, in the in the core in the in the students and extracting the first name last name and username and here I use the long form first name and last name <laughs> so that's gonna okay so let's uh, let's work with that let's grab this and let's add it to a transformation that I don't have let's create it let's give it the name this name over here let's create an XLT file here new other and an XSLT file XSL there we go I'm gonna call it uh, courses the file name must end in oh I think I had an extra character in there somewhere I'm gonna say finish uh, and in there I'm just gonna copy the content of my XLT and the other half here there we go and let's uh, indent this. Uh, and apparently, I'm not going to use first. Um, it's going to pattern match what? Let me see. Uh, once I find it. Oh, OK. So the input has first, last. No first name, last name. But that's OK, because that's what I'm using here. See that? First and last. That's exactly what I, I am expecting the inputs to have those those uh, elements called that way right um, although uh, for this file let me grab the name of the file because that's a, that's uh, in my transformer I use a different name for my transformation XSL so let me copy that very good uh, and here I have courses that's the input and I don't have the output just yet because I haven't generated it yet right so let's run it uh, although let's see what did, I, did we did we choose the output file name we didn't okay so this is gonna generate it in some place All right let's generate it where we are we are in SRC we are in CS 5200 we are on XML XSLT and then students that XML yes All right so let's generate that let's run this Let's see if it blows up. And there is an error. Let's see what is uh, could not compile style sheet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something it doesn't like. No such file or directory. Courses XML to students XML dot XSL. Did I not name it that way? Oh, right. It needs to be in the right place. So this also needs to be in that place, right? They're all in the same directory. Let's start again. Try it again. Okay, so it didn't blow up. Uh, that's that's encouraging. Let's um, refresh. There is a students.xml, and there it is. And why are you not? Okay, there it is. Although the indentation is awful. Oh, uh, there, there it is. So this is the input. This is the output document that was generated. Right? It has the student with no ID for some reason. What happened to my IDs? I didn't have any IDs in the input? Courses. Uh, the XLT should have said what to do. The XLT said to grab the ID, uh, generate an attribute called ID whose value is select ID. And courses, where is the ID? Oh, as an attribute. So this should be at ID maybe. Try that again. Let's run this again. Yeah, now it looks like the IDs were generated now. There we go. See that? It was the it was the at, right? Because there was it was an attribute, not a field. Not 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 an Wait, not an element. Uh, I changed in the XSLT, right? I told it that the um, uh, it's the value of the input ID attribute. Yeah, at ID. So course XML here, 
we're, we're grabbing the attribute ID, right? It was actually expecting an ID like this. Oh, okay. Right? All right. Uh, so let me fix that also here. I think this should be an at right here. At. Right. And there we go, right? We were able now to do the transformation from uh, from XML using XLT to an output uh, students.xml, right? Uh, the, next, the next thing that would be interesting would be to transform it into a completely different language, well, not that different, uh, into an, an HTML, right? So that we can be, it can be consumed maybe by human beings instead of consumed by some prog programmatic um, uh, audience, right? So let's, let's look at converting it into HTML instead.